And right now on our Fox Sports Hotline, we have UFC lightweight Danny Last Call Castillo on the phone. Danny, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good, man. Thank you again so much for taking the time out of your day to join the show. We know that uh, you're preparing here for a huge fight coming up at UFC 172 in Baltimore. That's happening, of course, on April 26th. Tickets are still available through Ticketmaster.com, so make sure to check that out. Danny, at first, uh, you were supposed to face Isaac Valley Flag, and now your opponent's been changed. Uh, you are facing Charlie Brenneman, who's returned to the UFC. What do you think about uh, the change of opponent? Do we have to talk about Charlie? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I kind of had it in mind to talk a little bit about if I. What, what did you have in mind? I was going to talk. I mean, I feel like you and, and Phil are friends. I've been in the sport quite, uh, you know, a few years, and we've hung out. I've been on your show a couple times, and you're sending me DMs. I'm like, hi, <laughs> just text me, dude. You don't have to DM me. We're friends, you know? You know, it was just like super frustrating. I'm like, you're like, this is Heidi. I'm going to call you in five minutes. Like, I know who you are, Heidi. Just call me. <laughs> That's right, Danny. Put her in her place. He's How you doing, buddy? He's keeping it real. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not some like guy off the tough that just got got in the scene, man. I've been in here for a while, and you know, like I've met some great people in the sport, and both of you guys are really cool. And uh, you know, I'm glad to be on. And um, you know, I feel like we're friends. You don't have to DM me. You know, you got the number. Just text me. That's right, Danny. You let her know how it is. I got it, man. I got it. How you doing? What's going on with you, man? I'm, I'm doing great. Um, I'm getting ready for the fight. You know, it's like uh, nine days away. I'm just, after that last fight, I got back in the gym. So it's been like um, three and a half, four months camp. You know, it, my whole life has been a camp for the most part. The last six years has just been grinding. I rarely take any time off and um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly trying to pursue that goal and that's, uh, to be the number one fighter in the world. And if you want to do that, you can't take breaks and you can't uh, stay out of the gym. So I'm always training. I'm always ready. Um, you know, I've took, I don't know, like six fights on short notice in my Zupa career. This could be my 18th fight with Zupa, you know, my 10th in the UFC. So, um, you know, it, it's a really cool experience. Um, my comfort level is super high. Um, I'm just excited to get out there. My weight's great. Everything's going well. I got these camps nailed out perfectly. And, uh, you know, the, the regiment is in, in place. Uh, I have a hard training camp, and this week's all about recovery and a little bit of game planning. You know, if I'm training, it's about 45 minutes to an hour and a half a day. Nothing too tough. Just trying to get a lot of sleep, rest, and recovery. Well, you talk about, you know, getting all these things together. And recently you opened up uh, your own Hot Pilates fitness uh, area in uh, Sacramento, California, hotpilatessacramento.com. How has that been for you working out of uh, your camp and keeping busy and still running a new business? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's definitely something new for me. Um, actually, I got another business lined up also. So um, you know, I know there's a, there's money at stake, so it's not a game, but, uh, to me, it's just like a grown up version of Monopoly. You know, I'm trying to be the best entrepreneur as possible. Uh, you can't fight forever. And, you know, I'm not the smartest dude, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, for some, some specific things, you know, especially money, um, you, you know, I feel like I'm doing a great job of, uh, you know, putting my, putting my eggs in the basket for the future because I don't want to work. I don't want to punch the clock ever. You know, that that's the reason why I started to fight, because I sat behind a desk for four or five years. And, it, it, uh, you know, those are the real heroes out there in, um, in this world. It's not the fighters. It's not the baseball players. It's the people that get up every day, uh, sit in traffic, punch a clock, sit behind a desk. Those are the people I admire, you know. <laughs> that's a tough day. I, I get to train with my buddies, have fun, laugh, you know, have a great time, travel. And, uh, you know, I, I have to call it work. But, uh, you know, it's really a dream come true, and uh, I'm really fortunate to be um, in the position that I am. Well, we're real happy for you, Danny. You've, you've been doing so well, and you talked about your comfort level and the way you feel in the cage and how you have your camps all down, and everything is pretty much on point. And you said you went right back into the gym after your last fight. 
uh, a fight that you came out the wrong side on a pretty bad decision, in my opinion. I think that you clearly had a 10-8 round in that first round. You beat on Edson Barbosa really bad. Uh, you took some leg kicks, some vicious leg kicks that a lot of people wouldn't have got up from after uh, in rounds two and three. But you went right back into the gym. How difficult was that? Did you have any injuries whatsoever? Yeah, see, that's the crazy part. Everyone was um, you know, really uh, you know, concerned about my leg and, and worried about what I was doing and how I was affected by those leg kicks. But the thing is, with, um, you know, for, for that, it's just really trained. It's just you know, you get into the sport. Um, if you're coming forward into a leg kick and you're pressing into a leg kick, it's not as bad as pulling back. And if you watch, um, you know, he's finished a couple guys uh, via leg kicks, and those guys were pulling back. So they were getting the full extent of uh, the blunt force. Me, I was jamming those kicks coming forward into them. Well, uh, you know, half of them. He did land a couple good ones. But uh, for the most part, I, you know, the five days, I took a week off to sit at home and, you know, just kind of reset my head. Usually I go to Mexico, but, you know, coming off a loss, I just didn't feel like it was, it was uh, you know, I, I didn't feel like it was earned. I didn't feel like I should go to Mexico like I do after every fight that I win. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I went back. I, in fact, that Monday I was in the gym watching sparring, and uh, we had a couple guys fighting that, that couple that month. So I, I wanted to be there to support them and hang out with Coach Bang. And like I said, everyone, uh, you know, it's it's fun to me. It's not work. So I went to the gym, hung out with uh, Coach Bang. We watched sparring. We joked around and had a great time, just like any other day. Um, of course, you know, I was a little bit upset and, and frustrated and you know coming off a loss there's definitely some motivation um inside of me and I, I feel like that's something that you see every time I step foot in the cage I'm a different fighter I'm an improved fighter and uh, uh I think that's what uh you know there's a lot of fighters that stay stagnant and um that's not me uh, I'm I kind of learn from other people's mistakes and uh I don't want to be that fighter well, how about uh, Coach Bang? You bring him up, and I think UFC 173 with TJ. That'll be the last time he corners somebody from Alpha Male. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Then he's uh, taken off to pursue his uh, lifelong dream, and that's to have an academy. I've been doing a, a bunch of media this week, and everyone's just asking me about the, that. Like, are you bitter? Is there hard feelings? Not at all, man. Um, at first I was because it came out of nowhere. Um, and uh, I spoke to him. You know, I've been working with him for 13, 14 months, and him and I have a, a friendship that we've built. Um, and uh, he basically said that his whole, you know, he as a kid, he's always wanted to have his own academy. Um, and he's from Colorado, so he wants to move back home to be closer to his friends and family. So it's hard for me to be um, upset uh, and, and pissed off at someone who wants to, you know, make that dream come true and be closer to their friends and family because that's pretty much what I did when I left the Bay Area. You know, I, I moved back home to Sacramento with my friends and family and I decided to pursue that dream and that dream was to be uh, a champion. You know, it's been a, a lifelong long goal for me ever since I started wrestling 20 years ago. I wanted to be a champion and I came so close uh, a few times. Uh, and uh, my last year in college, took second in the NAI national finals. Had I won the, the national finals, I, I probably would have just hung it up there and not thought about it again. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. Or I should say, fortunately, it didn't happen because now I'm here. Yeah, and you're doing awesome. And there would we actually, just hearing in your answer, talking about the way you talk about Dwayne, we know obviously that you, you don't have the ill will feelings. And I've, he may not be cornering you again, but does that mean that you'll never train with him again? No. In fact, he's in, invited us to come out to Colorado. He said uh, if there's any 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 fights that he wants us to come down, that he would uh, he would definitely come down for a couple weeks and to train us. We're still going to be at, like I said, man. I've met some incredible people in the sport, and, and Dwayne's one of them as well. I feel like I've uh, I'll be friends with him for the rest of my life, even if I decide to stop fighting tomorrow. You know, I'll, I'm sure I would talk to Dwayne in 20 years, you know, and, and hang out with him and laugh and have a great time. Uh, he, he's a good dude, man. I respect him as a person. I respect him as a coach, um, a husband, a father, and a friend. He's uh, I can't say enough about him. Um, but what I can say is 
Team Alpha Male, we were we were bad dudes before he got there. Um, you know, we're we're definitely we've improved a whole lot since he's been here, and we're gonna be bad dudes when he leaves. And you know, the cool thing about that is you see glimpses of Master Tong um, in some of us during fights. You see, you're gonna see glimpses of uh, Bang in our fights, and the next coach that comes along, he's gonna you're gonna see glimpses of them in our fights. So it's actually. Um, you know, it's pretty beneficial because we learned bank style for a year. You know, definitely I would like to work with him for another two years before he took off. But, you know, the next coach is going to bring his style and you're going to see some different fighters uh, coming out of our camp. But you're definitely going to see our roots. And that's kind of the cool thing about a fighter is uh, you can see who's trained him and, um, you know, what exactly uh, he's taken from that coach. Well, Danny, it is that time. We actually have come right up against the wall here and need to take a break. Like you said, we're cool. We could sit here and talk forever, <laughs> probably for another hour if we wanted to. But uh, right now yeah, we Yeah, why'd you, so why'd you wait 15 minutes to call me? You should have had me on the whole hour. We were breaking down the tough Ultimate Fighter stuff as being a Kennedy. Yeah, that's right, Danny. You tell her. You tell her. <laughs> well, do you want to stay on the line and finish out the show with us? Because we have to go to a break, but I can uh, keep yeah. you on here. All right, then. We'll hang yeah, on here sure. with Danny. Let's call Castillo. Right now, we're heading out to break. Stay tuned for more with Danny Castillo, who's fighting at UFC 172 here on Fox Sports 670. And now, back to the MMA Fight Corner with Heidi and Phil, here on the all-new Fox Sports 670. All right, welcome back. And right now on our hotline, we have UFC lightweight Danny Last Call Castillo. And because we actually have only about one minute left in the show, Danny, in 30 seconds or less, tell me about your upcoming fight with Charlie Brenneman. Yeah, Charlie Brenneman's a tough, tough dude. He's fought some of the biggest names in the sport. Johnny Hendricks, uh, Rick Story, Eric De Silva, uh, Rumble Johnson. He's going to be a tough dude. Everyone uh, tells me it's going to be an easy fight for me, but the minute you over uh, look at the is the minute you're um, looking up at those lights. So I'm not overlooking Charlie Brenneman. He's tough. It's going to be a tough fight. And i um, coming in with my A game, so it's going to be a great fight. Well, Danny, I know we kept you there on the line through all those commercials. And then, you know, I'm texting you weird stuff like, hi, Danny, can you please come on the show? Thank you. And, uh, you know, like you said, we've known each other, but uh, we are really all out of time. But tell me really quick where people can find out about your hot Pilates business. Yeah, uh, we're located in Sacramento, downtown Sacramento. It's called P2O Hot Pilates. We're on the corner of P and 20th Midtown, Sacramento. And it's SacramentoHotPilates.com. Um, we're doing extremely well, number one in Sacramento right now in the first 10 months, and I'm very proud of it. Well, cool. We advise everyone to check that out. We are out of time on the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports 670.